guys, today we're going to do a watercolor tutorial from start to finish. And this is for my Yuri on Ice Victory commission that I got at MTAC in MTAC 2017. And I'm gonna do something a little bit unusual for this ch uh, channel and go ahead and start from the sketch onwards. And it's gonna be quite a challenge for me because while I used to watch a lot of figure skating as a kid, I haven't watched figure skating in a really long time. So we're gonna have fun here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to sketch what I want to draw here on regular sketchbook paper. And I'm going to use a darker colored lead pencil than I normally do since you guys have complained that you can't always see what I'm drawing when I use the non-photo blue. And I've already got my reference pulled up on the screen here. So I'm going to start sketching in silence because I have a feeling that will be best for the commission. All right, now that the sketch is completed, and thankfully you guys can actually see it this time, I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to apply a soft graphite to the back using either a graphite stick or a graphite pencil. And I recommend you use a graphite that is B3 or softer. So B3 through B8 should work really well for this because we're going to do a graphite transfer. So I will check in with you guys once I have that set up. All right, guys, I have covered the back of this with graphite. So the next step is to <laughs> grab it, obviously, uh, is to place it and tape it down onto our watercolor paper. And I am using fluid cellulose-based watercolor paper, which is um, pretty standard for these con commissions. It is a cellulose-based watercolor paper that I use for convention commissions as well as for mixed media pieces um, and for a lot of my tests because it is economical and it holds up well and it comes pre-stretched on a block, but I think I'm gonna have to tape this down because it's the last page in the block. That's the big problem with these fluid pads is that the last couple pages tend to come unglued and you have to tape them down and that means you lose space on the page for your illustration. You can also use like a bulldog clip, which might be the solution I go with this time. But we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna finish taping this actually off camera because this has to be boring for you guys. All right, now that we've got this secured, we're gonna use a mechanical pencil and bearing down on it, we are going to go over this illustration, tightening it up and transferring the graphite that we put on the back of the paper onto our watercolor paper. So graphite transfers are really easy to do um, and they're great if you maybe don't have a computer so you, and a printer handy so you can't do uh, a printed blue line. But I demonstrate 
how to do printed blue lines if that sounds intriguing to those of you who are digital and maybe want to make the transition over to traditional. Um, I, have a I have a few tutorials on how to do that over on my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. So you guys get the gist of how I'm doing this. Let me move that bulldog clip. I am going to go ahead and cut and I'll see you guys when we're removing this sketch and we're looking at the graphite transfer. All right, so this has been transferred over. You can see that the graphite does a pretty good job. There's one area I need to fix. And the next step is I am going to create a wax resist technique using um, a, a clear wax crayon. And I have a tutorial video on how to use these that you guys should check out if you are interested in wax resist. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and check in with you guys in a bit. All right, so our next step involves, you guessed it, brush -o. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a large synthetic round and a cup of clean water. And we're going to want to activate or uh, apply a wash of water to the background. And I should have been smart and I should have clamp this down before I did this. But the plus side to this is it'll let me get to the edges and then I can always clamp it down after the And as you can see, the cellulose, pa cellulose based paper that I'm using here is buckling a little bit from all of the water. So I'm gonna try and scoop up the extra water really quick. And then go ahead and start sprinkling in the brush -o. And the brush -o is like magic. And the commissioner wanted something really shoujo and kind of magic. So I think brush -o is gonna be a good choice. Then we have some reds that I want to use kind of sparingly. All right, so I am going to step away and let this dry. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry. The next step is to head on over to the trash can and brush off the excess brush out. And the next thing we're going to want to do is use these teeny, teeny clips to secure the illustration to the board. And it's still fairly secure at the top. We'll see if I need to re-secure that later. Now, next step is, and you want to have paper towels handy, we're going to activate the brush-o that might be on the figures because it is better to deal with a known quality than it is to have a nasty surprise. So we, so far, so good. And we're also going to want to dab up the excess water that'll help it dry quicker. too much on my brush. Let's actually dab that up. And mostly the areas I'm concerned about are the faces. I just don't like when I get like, I don't know, a big purple spot in the middle of somebody's face. And I've already put their skin color down and it's ruined the skin color. 
That's not a good surprise to have. But it looks like with Yuri and Victor here, we're not gonna have to worry about that. It's fine if there's color on the clothes or pretty much anywhere else on the body that can definitely um, even make the piece look cooler. It's just that when it's on the face, it tends to be a problem. Because it tends to be a color that wouldn't work super well on a human face. Like green or this blue here. In fact, in fact, I think since we've got it, maybe we should try really carefully to actually work in some blue for Yuri and some red violet. Let's see if I can find a red violet. I do have a purple. I'm trying to work quickly. Oh well, I'll just grab the purple because I'm going to paint over this anyway. Actually, that purple is perfect. And I'm going to, well, I want to do some on his leg. Right. So I'm going to want to give that a chance to dry. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry overnight. I need to use a brush to brush away the excess brush -o that I applied onto their outfits. And I kind of want to avoid disrupting it. Perhaps I should have done the brush on their outfits later. This is sort of a new technique for me. So still kind of figuring it out. So I am going to go ahead and bring up my reference, of course. Oh, I still had some water in there and I'm going to mix up their skin color. So I'm gonna grab that Sakura Koi palette I showed you guys in the other tutorial video. And this thing is really a sturdily built little palette, especially if you remove this inset, which seems to be glued in now. Hmm. I was thinking you could remove it once you've used it up and use it for whatever colors you want to put in. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull out or activate the colors I think I'm going to use. So Payne's gray, a couple of the browns, black, scarlet for now. And I'll give that a moment to soak in. All right, so those have had a chance to soak in and activate. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple synthetic brushes and mix up my skin tones. So Yuri is pretty dark compared to Victor. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I mix up two distinct now maybe had a little more yellow ochre to Yuri's and a little more vermilion to Victor's and I'm going to grab a cover sheet so my hand isn't resting directly in the brush out and we're going to start with Victor And you see how the two, um, their faces are adjacent. I'm going to have to do them one at a time. It's going to add a little extra time to my drawing time, but that's okay. All right. Need to let that dry. 
right, so that's had a chance to dry. Now we're gonna go ahead and do your East face. And this will give an, uh, us an opportunity to see whether or not we need to mix anything darker. And I think with Yuri, we're gonna need to go a little darker. Maybe a little more pink. Maybe even a little bit of the reddish brown. I think that will actually give us the color we need. All right. So I am going to go ahead and start the blush on Victor and Yuri's cheeks. Start with Victor. I want something that kind of looks like a natural blush. So I am sort of spreading it across the cheeks. And I am going to put other layers on top. Other layers of skin color, I mean, as well as more blush, probably. And I'll let that dry before I do Yuri's. Right, and now we're going to do Yuri's. And it's rainy today, so my watercolors are going to not want to dry. Okay, so again, I'm going to, hmm, not super happy with Victor's blush right now. Like Gary's a lot better. There we go. That's better. Okay. Oh, they're so cute. All right, going to let them dry. So while I'm waiting for the skin tone to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start on Victor's shirt. So I'm putting some clean water into a well and I'm activating purple and that dark red, almost like a red violet because I want to create a red violet for his shirt. And I know that this particular hoodie he wears is light gray, but I am sort of going with the red blue theme that a lot of their outfits seem to have. Oh, don't want that color. And like I said earlier, when I do fan art commissions, unless the commissioner requests a specific outfit or unless a specific outfit just really resonates with me, I do like to try and come up with something a little more original. So I wanted to keep with this brush -o blossom we've got going on. I'm going to try to work delicately because I want to keep it. I think it looks cool and I may even try to reinforce it This is actually a really nice color that I just mixed and would be perfect for shading skin tones on more serious illustrations. There we go. And he also has that silver gray hair. So I'm going to start mixing that up. And what I used to do when I used the 12 piece set would be black and the Prussian blue mixed very, very light but I think I'm just going to go straight with some light panes gray. I think that will be easier and will look more accurate. What's nice about his hair is that I can always go back and add a lot of Copic opaque white if I want, or even use white color pencil 
to add back in specific white highlights. Found some unactivated areas that I thought would benefit from a little spritz. Alright, so that's had plenty of time to dry. We're going to move over now on to Yuri's shirt and I want that to be a light blue. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my light blue with a little bit of water. And like with Victor's shirt, I'm just going to do a light wash and I'm going to try to preserve a lot of the interesting brush -o effects that I was able to achieve. Now if I lose those, I will just do a glaze later on and try to replicate them. But you guys know how it is when you try to replicate things, it just never goes as well the second time. So we're really going to try hard to preserve the initial bloom and not brush it out too much. All right. And I'm going to want to start Yuri's hair. And Yuri's hair is black with dark brown highlights. So with watercolor, you really want to work, um, you want to work with your lightest color first. So we're going to go ahead and mix up a dark brown. Let's see if I can, nope. There we go. One of these days, I'm going to get a dual camera setup that I actually like. And you guys will be able to see what I'm mixing. But that requires a much larger setup than what I currently have. Alright, so we've got that base color mixed. And I'm going to have to have a delicate hand for this. And you guys know the drill, we gotta let this dry now. All right, so this has had plenty of time to dry and they're both looking really cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on their skin tones. Had to move some things around recently. And I may need to mix Victor's skin a little bit darker. I kinda wanna avoid doing that um, just because it's going to be hard to match with such a pale, pale tone. I'm also going to start the black that I'm going to use for their pants slash leggings and their skates. And I want a really light black because I want to, I know that's a bit of an oxymoron, but I really want a light sort of tone, uh, tone tint tone, a light shade of black so that you can still see all the color stuff. Also going to leave, at least on Victor, an edge where I don't fully color it. And I think that'll help. All right, I'm gonna let Victor dry and then I'm gonna do Yuri's. And actually, while Yuri's pants dry, I think I'm going, I mean, while Victor's pants dry, I'm gonna do Yuri's shirt. And since I have this cool brush effect going on, I really, don't want to mess with it too much. I really just want to hopefully knock in some of the shadows. Although they're, they get lost somewhere in there, so I'm gonna have to mix this blend a little darker. And it seems that Victor's face is mostly dry, so I can go in and hmm, maybe I should wait with Yuri, but I think, oh, okay, you're much too dark. I think I'll go ahead and get started. Yeah, I definitely need to mix Yuri's face a little darker because I like the transition here on Yuri's face. Um, 
and I would just spend forever trying to build up that same or a similar transition in shade for Victor. So I'm going to go ahead and mix Victor's a little darker. At least try. I think that'll be about right. And let this dry. All right, so that Yuri's pants, I mean Victor's pants, is, have had a chance to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the first layer of Yuri's, trying not to disrupt the brush out too much, since I think it adds an interesting pattern. And I'm gonna add another layer to Yuri's face. I hope that'll be better. I'm also going to go into Yuri's neck and so I think I skipped darkening it because I was working on his shirt. I'm also going to do his ear, I think. All right, so Yuri and Victor's skin tones are about where I want them to be, at least for now. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer to Victor's shirt. Again, being careful not to disrupt the cool brush out effects that I was able to get. Can okay, add a little more purple. darker blue to Yuri's and then I'm also going to do another layer on Victor's hair to be careful let me actually zoom in for you guys so when I do highlights I try to let the brush do most of the work and with watercolor you do, do highlights by what you don't paint rather than by what you do. All right and I also want to mix Yuri's hair a bit more saturated. All right and that'll be ready once these things have dried. Oh, I should also mix that black a little more intense while I'm letting things dry. Watercolor, you are literally watching paint dry. Okay, so Yuri's hair is had, I mean, Victor's hair, it, sorry, I keep, um, Whenever I'm not working on this, I'm actually working on my convention setup, or rather my craft show setup for a show I have tomorrow. So I keep fritzing out. Um, anyway, another layer here on Yuri's hair since Victor's hair is dry. And then another layer on the pants. Oh, and you guys can't even see that. Let me pull out my apologies. And I think it would be cool to do a gradient from the top to the bottom. Let's see if I can float one in. And I want to do these skating shoes skates sorry same way 
Okay. All right. That's kind of cool. So I need to let that dry before I can do the same on Victor. All right. So I think we can also go into Victor's pants, especially since it did activate some of the brush out and, uh, it's sort of creating a white chalky effect, which is not good, not wanted. And hello, cat, I'm busy. And, and um, so that is often caused by chalk additives in inexpensive watercolors like the Sakura Koi. They do contain um, chalk as an additive. It's called an optical brightener, and it's one of the reasons why I... Okay, the cat is super forcing his way into my lap. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I warn you guys when we're talking about inexpensive watercolors, why I say it might cause some muddiness or some chalkiness. Um, with the Sakura, Ko Sakura Koi's, I've used them for so many years that I'm actually familiar with how... Dude, just settle down. Um, with how to so come on how to solve that as a problem. <laughs> Sorry This cat is super insistent and he keeps doing the loops around my chair before he settles down which drives me nuts um, Anyway, so optical brighteners ie chalk or any sort of white additive It's not the biggest deal in the world um, But it is one of the reasons why you want to kind of keep your layers light with inexpensive watercolors, you want to limit your layers because they do sort of build up, they do add up. And even in something like black, uh, they add chalk to make it more opaque. This gray cat in my lap here that y'all can't see is being a huge booty butt. And I'm not getting the amount of work done that I need to get done because of him. All right, guys. So this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to go into Yuri's shirt one more. Not, yeah. Yes. <laughs> one more time and just add a little more shadow down here. Well, that's not really showing up quite the way I wanted it to. And his neck finally. And over here, I really want more purple in there. Let's see. All right. And to let that dry. All right, guys, so I'm going to start working on Yuri's hair now. And I'm going to mix up a very, or hopefully a very dark black brown. And I'll zoom in for you guys. And again, I let my brush do most of the work. Right? And go ahead and knock in his eyebrows as well. And let that dry. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Our colors have evaporated a little bit, so they have gotten more intense. And we're gonna go ahead and get back. And if you've ever wondered why your commission is taking so long, it's because with my new process, it does take two days to complete them. So it means everything takes more than twice as long. And I've been trying to raise the prices a bit to reflect the increase in effort on my part. And that's been a work in progress. I think a lot of you commission artists might 
know or recognize that when you raise your prices by more than say five dollars everybody starts to bulk they want to know why which is fine but it's hard to explain to people that you know I'm twice as good as I was when I first offered them at this price but yeah unfortunately they take twice as long but I'm twice as good so there is I think a payoff there And I apologize, I was off camera there for a while. Fortunately, today is nice and sunny and bright and hopefully dry. So hopefully my watercolors will be a little bit faster to complete today than they were yesterday. All right, now we can switch to a smaller brush and go ahead and fill in their eyes. So I want to go on the lighter side for Yuri's eyes. So they stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to start with a light brown mixed with that reddish brown and with yellow ochre. And then for Victor's eyes, I'm gonna go with a light blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw in his eyebrows because I forgot to transfer them. I'm also going to do another, dang it, Another layer of red in Yuri's mouth. And hopefully pick up that small red dot. All that dry and then I'm gonna start tightening up the details on the two figures all right so that's had a chance to dry and I've had a chance to have some coffee so I'm going to go ahead and begin tightening up the details on the characters so one of those things will be to go over my pencil lines with the color of the object, if that makes sense. So I'm doing that right now with Victor's skin tone. And what I used to do is I used to just, instead of taking the time to do this extra step, I used to just tighten up my pencils after the transfer. But I found that I really like the look from this step a lot better. I think it just has a more finished look. And now I'm going to do Yuri's. But it does take a fair bit of extra time to do it. So it's one of those things that results in a nicer commission but it does increase the wait time because you need a steady hand to do it properly. Oh, 
I seem to have picked up some purple. That's not good. Let's see if I have anything to pick that up with. That's what I mean about uh, unexpected surprises from unactivated brush -o. And then I actually want something much darker for under his chin. And I'm gonna go back and add a little depth to his eyes. It's probably not going to be a noticeable detail, unfortunately, but we'll know it's there. And do the same for Victor. purple with Prussian blue to get an actually nice dark purple. That's good. All right. Good that we can mix to that. And then his ear is really bothering me, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fill in sort of the shell part of the ear. That'll help hide where that accidental purple came into play. And then I'll tighten the details on that using a darker brown. And I'm actually using a little bit of Yuri's skin tone on Victor just to add some additional shading. All right. This ear is still damp, so I'll wait on that. We'll go in with Payne's Gray on Victor's hair. And I apologize that I'm a little off camera. Um, I'll fix it in a moment, but I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Work on that ear again. Hopefully we won't have any of those problems we had before. All right, so the next step is I said I was going to do a shoujo sort of background. So I've got Copic Opaque White and I will pull out I'm going to start painting in flower petals. I'm going to freehand them. I think they'll look better that way. I know they're difficult for you guys to see. I apologize for that. But basically, I am outlining a petal shape with the Copic Opaque White, which performs sort of like a white gouache. With petals that don't cross the figures. I think I'm gonna do a couple that do, just to help push depth. And since this is a water-based medium, it's going to activate some of the brush -o beneath it, which is, I think it's good, because it's going to add a little bit of color to the petals. And I go back and I add in a few more 
maybe even doing some overlap. Now I'm going to do one or two that cross over the figure. And I want to be careful because I'm not trying to cover anything important, but I want it to look I don't want it to look natural necessarily so much as mm, believable as an effect. Natural is not quite the right word for what I'm going for. All right. I think that works. So I need to step away and let the white gouache fully dry. All right, they're not all dry. They're most of them are dry. So you can see that they go kind of translucent once they've had a chance to dry. So I'm actually going to go in and do the white details on Victor and Yuri using the same Copic Opaque White. And you can see those white highlights really do help to pop things out. I have to be careful because not all of my flower petals have dried. And I don't want to run my hand through them. So since I can't get my hand where I need it to be means I need to twist my paper. And since we're almost done, but we're not quite done, I do want to say that this tutorial video was brought to you thanks to one, the generosity of the person who commissioned this piece, but two, also thanks to my membership, rather my affiliate ship, with Ink Drop Cafe, which is a creator collective. And you guys can find out more information about Ink Drop Cafe at inkdrop, inkdropcafe.com or check the description below for a link. They are a creator community, as I previously stated, and this YouTube channel has an affiliation partnership with them. As does my blog and my comic, Seven Inch Kara, has a full membership with them. And Ink Drop Cafe is a, right now it is primarily webcomic people, webcomic creators. So if you enjoy comics, if you enjoy reading comics for free, you should definitely check out the great comics that are on Ink Drop Cafe. And we hope to increase our ranks and diversify a bit in the upcoming months. So I am really excited about what Ink Drop Cafe has in store. So, like I said, you can check that out at inkdropcafe.com or come hang out with us on our Discord and talk with your fellow artists. Um, and you can find the link to that on inkdropcafe.com as well. And belonging to a community like that has really been great for my depression gives me people to talk to who understand what I'm going through all right so I'm going to activate a little bit of scarlet red I don't want a whole lot of red I just want a little and I'm going to start working it in and I don't want to disrupt some of the cool 
color variation, or rather interesting color variations we have going on underneath. So I really just want to do a light glaze that hints that these are cherry blossom petals since we're trying to do a shoujo theme. And as you guys can see, it makes the, if you add too much water, it can make your opaque white translucent and hopefully that will dry opaque again. If not, I can always add another layer and tighten things up. The only problem with that is it's more work for me. Add a little more red and repeat the process. And you really want to give this layer a chance to dry. And I really like this technique and I've used it in a couple of other pieces. In fact, the Majima commission, or rather the Majima piece that the person who commissioned this purchased um, also has the sort of translucent, transparent cherry blossom motif going on. And I also did a cool piece with hydrangea blossoms. I think I recorded it and it just needs to be edited like ever so many things, but um, I used that technique or a similar technique for that as well. So it is a technique that I really enjoy using because it has an interesting effect. And you can leave your petals sort of ghost-like, like they are here, or you can really get detailed with them. It's really all about what you're looking for, what effect you want. But I need to step away and let these dry. All right, so those cherry petals have had a nice chance to dry. I'm going to go on in with a darker red and just tighten them up, tighten some of them up, not all of them, because that would be, I think, a little distracting, but tighten some of them up a little bit. All right, and I told the commissioner that I was gonna make this thing glitter, glitter, bling, bling. So I've got some toys for that. And I will pull out to show you guys in a minute. I'm just assembling them right now. Actually, I do believe what I exactly said was shoujo, shoujo AF, and it will be that. Super duper glittery, blingy, and cute. Just assembling my collection of glittery goodness. And pull out. So I have some twinkling H2Os, which need to be activated early in blue and in purple. And if you're not familiar with these, these are a little bit more on the scrapbooking side of the art toy spectrum. And there's something I kind of adopted early on. I've also got some fine tech and I hear that paper and ink arts has actually started carrying like a huge range of the fine tech colors. So I'm gonna have to get my little booty over there And then I have just a bunch of different types of glittery markers. But we're gonna start with the watercolor things because those are the things that you gotta work with uh, with water. So they need time to dry. We'll start over here with Yuri, I mean with, yeah, with Yuri's shirt. And these do add a bit of color, but they're, they're pretty transparent. And 
this will probably not be too shimmery on camera, which is unfortunate. I'd love to show it off to you guys. Um, but it will be super shimmery in person. So when it makes it to the commissioner, I hope it is super duper gl glitter and special and amazing. That is what I want my commissions to be. I want people to feel special when their commissions arrive. And excited. So while I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna go into the red fine tech. And then I'm also going to go in the pink pearl interference fine tech. And this is gonna go on some of the other flowers that didn't get the dark red. And the intention for this is really just to add some shimmer. It's not so much to affect the color. You want to be kind of careful um, or use a softer brush than what I'm using because your brush can scrape away if your Copic Opaque White isn't 100% dry. It can scrape away some of it. And it's not the biggest deal, but it's not as pretty. Okay. And your shirt is almost dry. I'll go ahead with Victor's with some of the purple. But since it is purple, I'm going to try to keep it more so to the shadows. All right. And that needs a nice long chance to dry. All right, so that has had plenty of time to dry. I'm going to go in now with the black and I'm just going to add a little bit of black glitter onto their pants and their skates. Okay, that got a little over the line, so I'm gonna grab a napkin and dab that up. Let's see if I can't clean that up a little better without making things a lot of worse. A little bit of water. There go. hot in here so it's making and just adding some sparkle on top here and there and then some silver on the skates themselves And I'm going to let that dry. Hey guys, so next I am going to use a Sakura Glaze, which is an opaque white pen. That's it, if I can get it to work. It apparently has died on me. Okay, I guess. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to do the laces on their skates. And this is actually going to appear a little bit three-dimensional. And I'm also going to do Victor's strings. 
right, guys, so we are just about done with this. The only thing I want to do is some sparkly goodness, and these are acrylic paints. And somehow I thought I grabbed pearl, but really I grabbed white. Uh, but white will do. Just pref would have preferred pearl. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area because splatter techniques are a bit messy. So you're going to want a synthetic brush that's a little bit floppy. This Princeton Neptune is a great example of just such a brush. You're going to want to dip your brush into your cup of water. I won't lie to you guys and call it a clean cup. It is not clean, but it doesn't matter super much. And you're going to want to go ahead and shake your acrylic inks, if you're using acrylic inks, ahead of time. Dip it in, and we're going to want to mask off their faces. That is the one area I do not want sparkles in. So... There we go. Then we're just going to use a tapping motion on the metal ferrule of our brush, which will cause a light splatter effect like that. And of course, get it all over the white dress that I'm wearing. Of course, whenever you wear white, you're going to get art supplies all over yourself particularly staining ones. That's just, it's just the rule. Learned about that a lot while I was at SCAD. All right, and my white acrylic. All right, and we need to give that a chance to dry. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this watercolor tutorial. If you enjoyed it, I hope you will remember to leave a thumbs up, perhaps a comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I do art tutorials twice a week, and I'm always looking for suggestions, so if there's something you'd like to see that I haven't done, please let me know. I do recommend you take a moment to check out my backlog of videos. I have a lot of wonderful tutorials over there as well as my blog, mattosoup.blogspot.com, especially if you're interested in learning how to watercolor. I have a whole series of blog posts called Watercolor Basics, which will basically teach you how to watercolor from square none. So you can come in knowing absolutely nothing about watercolor, and I will teach you everything you're going to need to know to be able to start watercoloring with confidence, especially if you're interested in watercolor comics. Why bother with trying to learn without any help at all, making a whole lot of mistakes, wasting a whole lot of money, when you could do a little bit of research for free, save yourself a whole lot of time and a whole lot of pain, and save yourself from buying bad materials and benefit from my research. So I hope you guys will check that out. And I look forward to see you guys, seeing you guys again really soon. And if you like my work, please do check out our sponsor, Ink Drop Cafe at inkdropcafe.com. It is a creator collective, and there are loads of fantastic web comics over there for you to enjoy. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye!